I want to get this word out. I, I really feel like that I have a special word for you this morning. And it's going to come out of Mark chapter 4, verses 35 through 41. And I'm going to read that because I think it's important that I read this to go with what I'm saying. As evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross to the other side of the lake. Jesus said, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat, started out, leaving the crowds behind, but other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat, and it began to fill the water. And Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. And the disciples woke him up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that there's a storm and that we're going to drown? And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly, the wind stopped and there was a great calm. And then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? Or the translation of the Passion Translation says, Have you not learned to trust me yet? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they ask each other, that even the wind and the waves obey him? Psalms 24, 1 and 2 says, The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established upon the flood. The great commission that Jesus left in Matthew 28 to go into all the world and preach the gospel and teach the gospel and make disciples and baptize them was given to us based upon the ownership of the world. Who owns it? He does. That's why he gave us authority over everything that goes on in this world. Now, this is what I'm going to call this message today, and I hope everybody hears that, is an unexpected storm. This story that we read about is real, and it takes place on the Sea of Galilee. It was in the northern part of Israel. The Sea of Galilee was 13 miles long, and it was surrounded by hills and other countries and cities and towns. And Jesus made his headquarters around the Sea of Galilee. And many of the miracles that you read take place at the Sea of Galilee, around it, that 13-mile span. And he called all of his disciples from this area. But here they're getting to a boat, and I want you to notice that Jesus said to him, let's go, let's cross over to the other side. And when they are in the boat, in the water, crossing over, the word says, suddenly, suddenly the boat was interrupted by a fierce storm. A fierce storm. This has happened to you and I and all around the world. We're going along, we're doing our normal routine, we're going to work, we're having church services, we're going to prayer meetings, small group. We're doing in our life what we've always done. And in just a short span of time, that's interrupted and there's a storm. And we're told, stop, stop everything. Now, I don't know about you, but when I first heard, see I I am running and I don't talk about this a whole lot at our church, but I was running, I'm a campaign for state representative in Butler County District 53. And so on the Tuesday, right before everything shut down, our governor canceled or postponed the election day. And boy, when I heard that, because see, you work all the way up to that day and you go to meetings and you're speaking and doing speeches and in debates and putting all your money toward that and then you hear it's not going to happen. And then that very same week was Deborah's Voice uh, rally that was the beginning of bringing Deborah's Voice to the nation this year to go to Washington uh, next year, 2021. And I had to postpone that. And both of those things in my life were huge markers. 
were huge to me. Maybe other people not, but that was big to me. And I knew that I was going to have to postpone the Deborah's voice. And then the election was postponed. Suddenly, in the midst of life, in the midst of your life, in the midst of all that you are doing and what you've always done, suddenly we hear on TV that it's stopping. Nothing is going to be able to go on the way it was. And so you begin to question, why this? What do we do now? How will we live through it? All of us, even before this suddenly, have experienced suddenlies in our life. When we were just going along, life was happening, and something happened suddenly that changed the course that we were on. So this week I was meditating on Mark chapter 4 and on this storm. And there's some, there's some truths that I saw concerning suddenly storms. And I want to bring them to you for just a few minutes this morning. Number one, there is no guarantee against the suddenly. Against the sudden. You see, Jesus, the sovereign one who is omniscient, knows everything all the time. He's on this boat he tells them, get in, let's go to the other side. You wouldn't think that Jesus would lead them into a storm, but I, can I tell you, he's omniscient. He knows everything. They get in the boat. They're in the boat in the water, and suddenly a storm comes. They experience a sudden, fierce storm. What I want to tell you is that just because we're Christians doesn't mean that we will not have storms in our life. Joseph went to prison, but it was training for him to be second in command in Egypt to lead his nation of Israel out of a drought. Job lost everything but his life, and he never turned on God, and God restored more than he ever had before because he remained faithful. Jeremiah was put in prison. All of the apostles of Jesus were martyred except John, and he was exiled to an island. We're going to go through things in this life. There is, it is not a Christianity of a Santa Claus Savior. The Savior that I serve, no matter what kind of stuff I'm in and how bad it is, He is with me. He will never leave me nor forsake me. And when I first, we first started going through this and all the things that I thought was so important in my life begin to stop right in their tracks, I be, when I finally begin to get quiet in my spirit, when I finally settled down and tried to hear from him and begin to pray, I knew that this was not a suddenly time that was not going to be without learning and growing and maturing and being directed by him. Because there's something big coming at the end of this. We go through many things. Hard things, fierce things, life-changing things. But he has promised, I am with you always. Can you imagine right now being in this storm without Jesus? Number two, sometimes when we're going through suddenly storms, it may seem that God isn't doing anything, isn't saying anything. Because see, the disciples felt the storm. They saw the storm and the water was coming over in their boat and, and they started trying to bail out the water and get rid of the And they couldn't do it. It was becoming too fierce. Think of that. They are fearful. They are crying out. They even wonder about his concern because they say, don't you care that we're going to perish? And he, he, he's sleeping in the back of the boat. Got his head on a cushion. But Jesus wakes up and he wakes up at the sound of their crying out. The reason sometimes it doesn't seem that he's doing anything is because, number two, three, he is waiting on us to cry out for him. Have you cried out for him through the last few weeks, through the last four weeks or so? Have you got alone? Have you cried out to him? Because see, the minute they cried out, I want you to get this with me. The storm was violent. The storm was fierce. The boat was in the waves going back and forth. The water was coming in the boat. In the natural, it looked like they were defeated and would die. But when they cried out, 
He didn't rebuke them for crying out, for being in fear. He just stood up and said to the wind and to the waves, be still. Peace, be still. And God sometimes seems to be silent. And we long for a word. We long for an answer from him. But we think, are we hearing it? Do we hear it? And I want to make this statement right now. Sometimes the silence of God is God's highest thought toward you. Sometimes the silence of God is God's highest thought toward you. He is not sitting there idle. It's not that you're not on his mind. You're always in his heart. You're always inside his mind, his heart. But he's wanting us to grow and be a people that will reflect his love, reflect his presence, and touch those people in our sphere that nobody else can touch. And so sometimes he's silent to cause us to cry out to him. What I mean by that is he may not be talking now, but I'm going to tell you, he's carrying you through this. He is in control. And you learn to trust him there. Number four, in a time of suddenly, fear, if we're not careful, will replace our faith. Now, I want to take you back. I'm not going to go through it all, but all the way up into this chapter four, over in the, toward the end of chapter three, Jesus was on the mountain and he was teaching people. He was teaching crowds about his kingdom, about the word of God. He was performing miracles. He had healed Peter's mother-in-law. He had done so many miracles. They had seen all of the supernatural. But yet when they got in that suddenly storm, they were afraid. They lost faith and they began to fear. And... Let me tell you something. I have heard there is so much fear that has been going on. But I'm going to tell you today, I stand planted on the word of God. And the word of God says that he will never leave me, never forsake me. The word of God said he is always with me to the end of the world. He surrounds me. He compasses me about as with a shield. His word is forever settled in heaven. He is omniscient, meaning he knows everything. He is omnipresent. He's everywhere all of the time. He is alpha. He is omega. He's the beginning. He is the end. He is the first. He is the last. And he is in control. And he does not change. You know where the variable is? You know where the change comes? It's us. Because we live so much to our emotions. And there's nothing spiritual about our emotions. And the longer you let those emotional thoughts linger in your mind, what you think on long enough will begin to control you and control your actions and control your speech. But I say today that I am not allowing this situation to take my faith in Almighty God. When the suddenly comes into our lives, our Savior waits for us to look at Him 2 Timothy 1 7, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of love and power and a disciplined mind, a sound mind, a disciplined mind. What's, that was Paul writing to Timothy. What were he saying? Timothy, you're going to go through things in life, but don't be timid about it. Let the word of God rise up out of you and that control you and not timidity or fear. Keep your mind disciplined. The next thing is Jesus hears our cries. I think I've already hit that. Jesus didn't hear the loud howling winds. He did not feel the water as it was rushing into the boat. He didn't feel the boat moving across the water in in the waves. But he did hear the cries of his disciples. That's what he's waiting to hear from you. Another another truth that I saw is sudden storms serve to turn us to Jesus. Even though the disciples were fearful, they were trying to do it all of their own. They were trying to get themselves out of a storm that they could never get themselves out of. Don't we do that? Something begins to happen in our life and it's really too big for us, but we try to get ourselves out of it anyway. It was when the disciples began to turn to Jesus and remembered he's right here. And they cried out to him that he woke up. Well, really, he's God. I don't think he was ever asleep. 
I just think he wanted to see how long he's going to take them to cry out. I really do. Sometimes it takes us too long. We need to cry out the minute we see something. Because we can be so caught up in life that God is not the center of our, of our life. It's like, it's like this. Here's our life, you know, the sphere of our life. And we've moved God to the edge of our life. We've allowed him to be moved to the edge. What did they do? Before the storm came, he went to sleep. They were not in communication. They're just doing their thing. But in the storm, what did they do? Ran to him, cried out, woke him up. It is the same with us. In this storm, we turn to him. We run to him. In his love, his mercy, his grace. He embraces us and He carries us through the storm. Or either He'll stop it and command it to cease. Another truth is storms don't last forever. This thing's about over. But I truly believe that during this time, God has been waiting on us all to run to Him and to cry out to Him. Because there's a new level of His presence, of His nature, of His anointing, and of His glory that the church is getting ready to move into. On the Sea of Galilee, a violent storm can come up within a matter of minutes. The turbulence that you may be walking in right now, it's going to be over. The pain will cease. The power of the storm will soften. Another truth I saw is that others watch you go through the storm. See, everybody's watching you. I don't care who you are. Everybody is watching you go through the storm. They're watching your faith be activated. Your strength to stand in this hour. They're watching your trust in Jesus. And it's going to speak to them. And the Lord will teach others and draw them to himself. And the last point, the last truth that I saw is this. The sovereign Lord... The sovereign of the sudden is in control. The disciples were overwhelmed by what they had seen. And then Jesus stills the storm. And you know what? It brought a new reverence for him. They knew how vicious the storm was. They were experiencing it. But he spoke to the storm and it calmed. And it caused them to have a new reverence for him. They were reminded that he is in control. And when everything else seems to be out of control, he's still in control. And I want to make this statement. I hope you hear this. That boat could not sink. Could not sink because God's plan for the world to be saved was on it. The church of the living God will never sink. We will never be, we will never be overpowered or taken out of the way because the church is the light to the world that Jesus Christ is the way to salvation. And it's not going to be overcome. Until Jesus says, it's time, bring them home. Or until the Father tells Jesus, it's time to bring my people home. You see, God's plan for our loved ones and our lives. That plan is not ruled by a whim, by an accident, by a circumstance, by an illness or an evil. The plan of God for us is eternal. It began before time began. And I'm going to end with these two scriptures, Isaiah 43, 1 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and I am your Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You know, when the Lord Jesus spoke to that storm and said, be still, and it calmed, I made this statement that the disciples had so much more reverence for him, and they saw 
him at a level they had never seen him before. And I can tell you, I've been through trials in my life. All of us have some things that I, I couldn't get myself out of. Some pain, some grief, some obstacles, challenges. I couldn't get myself out of it. I couldn't calm that storm. And then I said, Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus. When I didn't know what my life was going to be from day to day, and I'm serious, I've been there. See, you, you sit there wherever you're watching and you think, well, that's church. Those are pastors. They've got all together. Probably haven't known any trials. You don't know us. Because every person has experienced suddenly times of the storm. But every time that I have, he's, He has calmed the storm. Now, some of them didn't get over as quick as I wanted. But maybe it was in that area of the storm I needed more maturity and it took a little bit longer to get me where I needed to be. But even in that, His arms were around me. Because He is for you. He's not against you. He loves you. He gave everything he had for you. So when God has delivered me out of some storms, and maybe the storm didn't cease, but I was able to mature and grow and and move far away from the pain of it, it always made me love him more and always gave me a greater revelation of who he really is. My last scripture is 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 9. And... It's from the Passion Translation. Though we experience every kind of pressure, we're not crushed. At times, we don't know what to do, but quitting is not an option. We are persecuted by others, but God has not forsaken us. We may be knocked down, but not out. The sovereign of the sudden was, is, And we'll always be in charge. No matter what we're going through, we can stand on the everlasting truth that our God reigns.